Well, hello everybody. Good day to you and welcome back. If this is your first time here, just welcome. I'm glad you were here. I'm also glad to be here. This thing right here is a 2008 Jaguar XJ series with a 4.2 liter V8 non-supercharged. And uh, some of you guys have seen this hanging out in the background. Uh, it's been here a couple times for us some various issues. Uh, last time it was here, I put a fuel pump in it. Um, it is back with a check engine light. It feels like it has a misfire. Uh-oh, turn that down. Copyright, entire copyright off. It feels like it's got a misfire. It's it, it's rough and kind of shaky shaky. So I've, I've got the scan tool pulled up and uh, we're gonna go ahead and get into the ECM on this vehicle and see what is going on. So stay tuned. This should be a very good video. Okay, going into engine. ECU needs to be identified, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I know. IDing, codes, let's see what uh, what we got here. Huh. P0208, injector circuit open, cylinder eight. Uh, P0308, cylinder eight misfire, and P0316, a misfire detected on startup within the first 1,000 revolutions. All right, so we have a misfire. That confirms what I was feeling. Uh, let us pop in the hood. See what's going on on cylinder eight. Alrighty, so I believe cylinder eight is this last cylinder on the driver's side. And our trouble codes were telling us there's something affecting uh, the injector circuit. So let's, well, let's dig out our injectors. This EVAP connector is in the way. Let's just pull that out of the way. Let's see what we can see. All right. I see injectors, they're way down yonder under this fuel rail. One, two, three, and four. What is this? What is this? Do you see what I see? There's the connector. But it's not connecting to anything. See it down there? Can I reach it? Oh, come on. I got it. Here it comes. Well, there's my connecting unit for the injector. Where's the wire? Uh-oh. Look at that. That's the wire. Oh, there it is. There's the wire. You know, I'm going to go out on a limb here and speculate that uh, some crispy critters have been inside of this car because somebody ate this injector wire. I'm going to need to replace that connector and figure out how to splice it into this harness and that's going to be a challenge. There's not much space going on back here. Okay. Let me go see if I cannot order a new connector and see if it's available. Perfect. Okay, I'm back. Surprise, surprise to me. Um, the parts store actually stocks this, uh, according to them. So uh, I need to strategize on how I'm going to get in here and gain some access to these uh, wires so I can splice in a new one. Because they, those rats or squirrels or mice or gerbils or guinea pigs or whoever was in here, raccoons even, they chewed that off right down to the nub so there's there's actually like nothing there to go off of um i think what i'll do is pull this bracket off right here and uh, that might give me enough space to to play around so let's, uh, let's see how this works out i think i have a plan but we all know how my plans work out they end up having me doing things twice or thrice but that's okay because i left my job allegedly Let's see. Ah, flashlight gravity. That was just a little bit of gravity. Not too much of it. Uh, one more connector, nut, bolt, whatever, right here. Unclick. There. Stay. 
Um, all right, that's attached a lot to some other stuff. So, other than disconnecting it all, I'll just unbolt that solenoid. That seems like a good idea. <laughs> right. Okay, let's uh, attempt this again with the uh, with a smaller socket. Let's try seven millimeter. sort of getting some some access to that area I would like to get this whole assembly out of the way I'm, I'm just gonna have to disconnect it all let's see this is I believe an evap line let's lose that maybe it's a maybe fuel line nope that's evap I confirmed this because it did not spray fuel on me and this is routed under the other injector lines wires so I'm gonna unconnect those and we'll swing the whole assembly forward and out of the way it's a super tight squeeze down there good thing I have long flanges That's enough. Put that under there. And uh, now I seem to have generated some space. So what I gotta do is figure out how to open this up and run some splices. Ooh, I know, bungee cord. And what I mean by bungee cord is I'm just going to tug this harness out, up and out, and this bungee will hold it so I can work on it. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Smarter, not harder. Okay, a little bit more space, and I think I got enough room to work with that. Good. Okay, it is now at this point when uh, we get into the surgical aspect of what we're doing here. I need to get into this harness to pull these wires back to uh, facilitate a repair. Real sketchy like because I gotta cut through this hard plastic loom and I also have to not cut through the wires that are inside of it. This feels like a very well built harness. It's, it's pretty tough. There we go. We're in. You know, one thing I've noticed over the years is for some reason, the crispy critters always prefer fuel injector wires, and I don't know why. I've heard that some manufacturers lubricate them with peanut oil in order to pull them through their looms or something like that, but I don't know if that claim is, uh, is valid or not. It could be fake news. rest of these wires to make sure I didn't cut one that's a negative and right here is the injector circuit again it, that one's also independently taped up so I need to get rid of the tape that's on that one as well very carefully with surgical precision It's 
so brittle I can't even grab a hold of this to just kind of peel it off. It just uh, kind of crumbles. Not cool. There we go. Now we're getting somewhere. Yeah. Woohoo. All right, there's my two two wires of this uh, circuit. Standard branded component. Part number S824, titled Connector, Connecteur, and Connector. I didn't pronounce those other languages right, but if I speak English, uh, bad English, a uh, little bit of French, a little bit of German, a little bit of Spanish, but only like 2% of the others. So, retention. It was all about retention. Anyway, I digress. I'm rambling. Let's compare new connector with old connector. And uh, they appear to be identical-ish. Looks good. Now these are different labeled wires, so I'm gonna make sure I connect these in the proper orientation. Looks like the blue with the white or yellow tracer is gonna go to this black one here. And the orange with the red tracer is gonna be the red wire. And matching this up to these two, that is accurate. Okay. So there's two rules of the internet when uh, making videos. Uh, rule number one is don't weld on the internet. And uh, rule number two, don't solder on the internet. Uh, I am preparing myself right now to violate rule number two and subject myself uh, to the re that is going to accompany my soldering efforts. I say that because the soldering army will chime in to tell me how wrong my procedure was and how they would have done it and that's fine we all have our opinions and uh, I'm gonna do this the way I want to do it and that's just how it's gonna be and the way that I'm gonna do that is I'm going to create a semi mechanical connection followed up by a soldered connection if you guys haven't noticed, I tend to employ a different soldering method every time I solder a wire. I figure that's the best way to generate the maximum amount of re possible. Which is good for the algorithm. So let's see how this method works. We're just gonna do like a, a linear twist here. It's not gonna be the greatest twist. Oh, heat shrink. Oh, where's my heat shrink? Yeah, that oversight would have sucked. So now I've got uh, I've got two pieces of heat shrink on this. Uh, I will now proceed to pick up where I just left off. So we're gonna do black wire and blue wire. That's first on my list. Yes, sir. What is what? That is a tiny house. I, they call them tiny houses. It's like a house built on a like a cargo trailer or something. Yeah, well it doesn't come off the trailer. It like stays. I don't know, probably I don't know, a few thousand bucks. I mean the trailer is gonna cost twenty five hundred dollars, I'm sure. And then you got Yeah, it's, it's a way to like own your house without owning uh, real estate. I mean, I to tell you the truth, I I think it can't, this, this method sucks. I think a, uh, like an RV would be better because they're kind of like made for that. But, uh, uh, oh, I don't, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, they, they call them tiny houses. Okay, so I've achieved a semi-mechanically twisted connection. now solidify this connection with heat and solder. Now the way I like to do this is to get some solder on the tip. That's for good heat transfer. Let's see if I can do this. This is a very awkward position that I'm in. I'm sitting on top of the radiator, leaning over, supporting my weight with a uh, 
my left arm and trying to work with my left and right arms. I really can't put any pressure on this at the way this is working out. Come on now, heat up. All right, there we go. It's starting to flow a little bit. Please. I'll just hold it here and let time do its thing. There's some, there's some flow. Good. I'm gonna get all of it. Every bit of exposed wire is gonna get some solder. There we go. Hmm. The other side that looks pretty good too it's a good connection I'll uh, I accept that let's uh, repeat the procedure on the other wire sorry if you all can't see try and there some good twisting action they're both wrapped around each other. And same thing, heat and flow. Get a little bit on the tip for some good heat transfer. Do, 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 do. There's that phone. And I know I need the flat tip for this gun, not the pointed tip. I don't have the flat tip. There we go, wire's hot, we got flow. Go baby, go. Sweet. And inspecting that one, giving it the tug test. We're connected. Let's put the heat shrink in place and I'll heat gun this. There. All right, shrinkage. Begin the shrinking. That's pretty. All right, that will do. Okay, so naturally I can't just uh, leave these wires dangling out here all willy-nilly like. So uh, this is not electrical tape, this is uh, wiring harness uh, cloth tape, uh, similar to what would be used in a OEM situation. And I'm just gonna wrap all this stuff back up with this tape. I uh, do not like the pliable electric tape because it gets all gooey and sticky and nasty and slimy. Uh, it's great for band-aids, but uh, I don't like it for actual electrical repair. Get rid of that. I'm leaving the injector wires alone and not taping them. I'm just buttoning up the rest of this loom or harness. I'll come back later and uh, get the actual injector wires. And I'm gonna go ahead and bring this tape over top of the plastic loom that's already here, just to make a smooth transition, transition between the two types of protecting devices. There. Beautiful and a, a snippy snip.
Whoop. reaching this one. These are smaller, so this will be a bit of a do 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 challenge. I think what I'll do is segment this and do it without actually running the roll. I'll just cut off sections of it. Come here. I hope you guys can still see. I know my hands in the way. Oh, this is coming out to be tip top. Oh, I like it. go and I'll do one more section right here just to stiffen up that uh, intersection. We'll go in it from the small angle like so. Wrap around the bottom, back over the top. There. That's good. Do 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 do. Okay, next, I'm going to put this harness back down here where I found it. And uh, we're going to get everybody reconnected. Ooh, you know, there's a bunch of leaves and junk down there. I'm going to bust out the assault blow gun and clean all that, that crust out of there. That doesn't need to be there at all. All right, time for blow gun cam. Shiny. Okay, it is at this point in time when I can start connecting all this stuff back together and uh, see if that misfire goes away, which it will. Let's see, we gotta stick this guy back down there where it lives. That plugs in right there. Click. Connector click. And it, if I recall, All these injector wires went over this EVAP hose right here. Let's see, there's one. That one went there. This one went down there to number six. Click. And this one, of course, is number eight. Uh, didn't click. It's connected, but uh, I didn't feel it click. There, that's good. Okay, let's get this bracket on. That goes like so. Right there, right there. This guy connects right here to the purge solenoid, and then it bolts on right there. Hmm. have the small finger that I need to make that thread so I'll use a tool to help me there we go purge valve click okay I've got two little nuts those go on the studs coming out of the rocker arm covers and or slash valve covers same thing different name This is supposed to be connected. Maybe it's this one. Yeah, it's this one. That's supposed to be on there, clipped in place. And I guess this one just hangs out loose down here. There's no mount for that one. 
Okay, everybody's buttoned up. This is good to go. Let's head back inside, starting the engine, and uh, see what's up with that missile. Okay, we're looking for data. Right there. Uh, fuel and emissions. Ooh, I don't think I have a misfire counter on this. Okay, I've got no misfire logs uh, on this uh, on this scan tool that's available to me through Jaguar's ECM. So I can't monitor the misfires. However, I can tell you just from my uh, uh, my sensory perception of the situation uh, that the misfires have been eliminated and cylinder number eight is now running as designed. Uh, after performing a code clear procedure, check engine light is off and uh i think we're good to go i think i'm all done with this particular video right about now i'm not going to bore you guys with the test drive i know some of you want to see it but uh, i'm not going to go that far i think i'm already 30 40 minutes into this one so like i said i'm just going to go ahead and close this one out right now all of that as always i'd like to thank each and every one of you guys individually and personally for watching however i can't do that because that would take me like a month to go through a hundred thousand people so i'm just going to thank you all at once in one generalized moment so thank you guys for watching this video i'm assuming that since you made it all the way here to the end of this video that you liked this video if you did like this video please communicate that to me effectively by happy tapping that like button down below that button is what lets me and youtube know that i've done a good job here and if YouTube thinks I've done a good job, it is far more likely to recommend my content to other potential viewers. And that's good for me. That's also good for the viewers. So again, and as always, thank you guys for watching. And most importantly, do not forget to have yourselves a great day. See you guys later.